والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of In the Light of the Quran. As we are trying to see our lives, to see this world, this universe, in the divine light of the Quran, the literal word of God, so that we know where we are heading to and we know our goal, we know where we stand. And this gives us a lot of determination, this gives us a lot of uh, confidence and a lot of strength to carry on on the way leading, inshallah, to. Uh, the eternal abode of the believers, which is paradise, Jannah that Allah promised the true servants. Today's wisdoms or today's light is from uh, a very beautiful surah. Most of us know them and they talk about, they give us wisdoms on the individual level. It talks basically about the perfect character, how we Muslims can be perfect individuals with perfect conduct, with perfect character, perfect behavior, the wonderful example Muslims can give to all the world. And this is how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. We will recite the verses and then we will take the meaning of how this, these wonderful wisdoms shape up the righteous and wonderful character of the Muslim. We will start with the recitation first, insha'Allah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا ربكم أعلم بما في نفوسكم إن تكونوا صالحين فإنه كان للأوابين غفورا وآت ذا القربى حقه والمسكين وابن السبيل ولا تبذر تبذيرا إن المبذرين كانوا إخوان الشياطين وكان الشيطان لربه كفورا وإما تعرضن عنهم ابتغاء رحمة من ربك ابتغاء رحمة من ربك ترجوها فقل لهم قولا ميسورا ولا تجعل يدك مغلولة إلى عنقك ولا تبسطها ولا تبسطها كل البسط فتقعد ملوما محسورا إن ربك يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر إنه كان بعباده خبيرا بصيرا ولا تقتلوا أولادكم خشية إملاق نحن نرزقهم وإياكم إن قتلهم كان خطأ كبيرا ولا تقربوا الزنا إنه كان فاحشة وساء سبيلا ولا تقتلوا النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ومن قتل مظلوما فقد جعلنا لوليه سلطانا فلا يسرف في القتل إنه كان منصورا ولا تقربوا مال اليتيم إلا بالتي هي أحسن حتى يبلغ أشده 
وأوفوا بالعهد إن العهد كان مسؤولا وأوفوا الكيل إذا كلتم وزنوا بالقسطاس المستقيم ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا ولا تقف ما ليس لك به علم إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤولا ولا تمش في الأرض مرحا إنك لن تخرق الأرض ولن تبلغ الجبال طولا كل ذلك كان سيئه عند ربك مكروها Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Now these verses from this wonderful surah, the surah of Al-Isra. We know this surah talks about the incident where Allah took Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to, uh, or he caused, or he told uh, and ordered uh, the angel Jibreel, peace be upon him, to take Prophet Muhammad to Jerusalem, to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, then to ascend with him to the heavens. And we all know about this story. But in this verse, Allah gives us the uh, frame of the wonderful Muslim character. The first thing of the Muslim character, the first important aspect of it is to worship Allah alone. Allah says that Allah has ordained uh, you, Allah has commanded you that you worship none but, but Him. That's the first aspect of the Muslim character. We worship Allah alone as He created us, as He is the one who bestowed His bounty upon us. Without Him, no one would be alive. No, nothing would be here. So the first thing is to be thankful to Allah. This is the basis of the Muslim character, thankfulness to the Creator. And we are, when we establish this basis or this foundation, everything in our lives will fall in place. Everything will be right. We will follow the right track, inshallah. So the first aspect of the Muslim character is to worship only Allah alone. This is the principle. This is the foundation of the Muslim character. Then Allah said after that, and that you be dutiful to your parents. Look at the Muslim character, how beautiful it is. Be dutiful to your parents. Be dutiful to them. Do not disobey them. Do not treat, treat them harshly or badly. No, treat them in the best of ways. And then Allah says, that especially when they reach an old age. This is at the time when they become very weak and fragile and they need help. They need support of their kids. As they dedicated their lives to help you, they spent all their time, all their efforts to look after you and bring you up in the best of ways. Now it's your turn to look after them when they have become weak. Could you see how Muslims uh, should be actually? And when we, if we really apply Islam, could you see how life can become, can become so wonderful and good for us? Now we know today that so many people, and unfortunately this disease has spread and has reached the Muslim lands and the Muslim countries. Uh, when their parents reach an old age, they, they send them to old people, you know, ha people, you know, the houses that look after old people, the old or the folk houses, as the, some countries call them. Now, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu told us that your mother and your father are your get, gate to paradise. If you want to enter paradise, look after your parents. And one day someone came to uh, Ibn Umar, and he said to him, I want to make jihad, I want to fight for the sake of Allah, to raise the word of Islam, to spread Islam to the world. Ibn Umar said to him, are your parents alive? He said, yes. He said, oh, actually this incident happened with Prophet Muhammad, someone came to them, and Ibn Umar did the same with someone else who came to him. He said, your parents are alive? He said, yes. He said, go and through them make jihad, make striving through them, because paradise is with them is by serving them, looking after them, especially when re they reach an old age and they need help and support and they need someone to look after them. Then he says, and uh, never ever rebuke them or give them a very bad word like saying, ah, forget it or stop doing that. You cannot say, you cannot speak to your parents in that manner. You have to look after them, speak to them gently in the best of ways as they have so much right on them. No matter what you do, you will never pay them back what they did to bring you up, what they did to raise you in the best of ways. Then uh, Allah says, and you should actually be 
uh, so humble before them. You should have humility before them. And you should give them a degree over, even over yourself, even over your kids, even over your family. Why? Because of the sacrifice that they did for you. Then Allah said, Allah taught us to pray to Him and supplicate to Him, to ask oh, our Lord, be merciful to them as they uh, looked after us when we were kids. So this supplication should be part of our character, of our worship. Oh Allah, have mercy upon our parents because they looked after us when we were kids very weak kids who needed help and support. And then Allah says, Allah talks about certain details like some people sometimes get busy and they cannot spend all their time with their parents looking after them. Allah says here, Allah knows what's in your heart. So if you are sincere in helping your parents, just do your best and do what you can and Allah will accept that and Allah will magnify your reward. Then Allah tells us about the rights our relatives, our kins have upon us. That we should not cut the relations of the womb. We should always be in touch with them, give them their rights. You see how beautiful the social life of Islam is? And this is how Muslims should be. It's a wonderful life. It's a beautiful social life. It, people have some kind of integrity, solidarity among themselves. They help each other. If anyone falls into a problem, we all help. We all come together to help each other. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about a very great wisdom, a great light, that when you spend, do not be excessive. Do not be excessive, lest you will uh, spend all your wealth and then you will have to ask. You will be blamed for that. You will have to ask people for money. No, be moderate. Follow the middle course in your life, in spending, and do not be miserly as well. So always, always follow the middle course. Then Allah warned us against killing people. Murder is a heinous crime in Islam is not unacceptable and fornication is very evil. Allah said it's a very bad way to satisfy one's needs. Then Allah talks about the money or the wealth of the orphans. Look after it, never abuse it, never take it for yourselves. And Allah told us to be just to the people in selling and buying and all that stuff. And Allah gives us a very important wisdom. Do not follow the things that about which you have no knowledge. Always have knowledge, then follow the knowledge that you have. Then Allah says, don't be arrogant. Never be arrogant. These are the wisdoms that Allah gives us because Allah at the end says, all of these are very evil. Then Allah concludes this set of verses by saying that these are wisdoms that Allah and light that Allah has given you. So follow them. And inshallah, by following that, we will achieve the wonderful Muslim character. These are wonderful wisdoms, a lot of light in this wonderful surah. Let's take it and benefit from it and live by this light. And inshallah, this will lead us to paradise. Until we meet next time, I leave you in peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.